We'd like to welcome you back to part two of our current event and weekly Bible study for May 25th, 2015. Continuing, next report. ABC Family Network proudly features two teenage boys in romantic same-sex kiss. As the years tick on and the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender movement gets bolder and bolder, the standard for decency and morality gets lower and lower. Just a few years into the modern uh, LGBT pride explosion, uh, what do we see on the television station that calls themselves ABC Family, which is now broadcasting two teenage boys romantically kissing each other? How far behind can shows promoting pedophilia be? Notice kind of the same theme here. See, one evil, wicked sin leads to the next. You accept one wicked level of perversion, then it's not things that you might have never accepted five years ago. Oh, wow, you know, now it's not that big of a deal. It's a conditioning tool. Shows, what, what do we have next? Uh, shows promoting pedophilia, shows promoting bestiality, which is sex with animals. Rest assured, they are on the drawing board at this very moment. Absolutely. It has been called the history-making gay kiss. As the Fosters TV show, which airs during prime time on ABC Family, which is a new kind of family, which is that literally that was there. A new kind of family. Yeah, a new, perverted, sick, disgusting, unbiblical, ungodly kind of family. But they left out all those other adjectives. Anyway, um, they featured the youngest same-sex kiss ever. Yes, on a so-called family-friendly network, two 13-year-old boys lock lips and gay activists and their allies are frantically celebrating the moment here. Here's, a, here's an actual uh, picture from the report here of the two. And they're uh, just getting ready to kiss there. The most disgusting thing. I can't watch men kiss. It, it, I, I can't even look at it. it it's just disgusting. And they're, they're, here's they're right in the process or whatever. Anyway. Yeah. GLAD, which is formerly known as Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, stated that ABC Family's The Fosters breaks new ground with Judd and Connor's kiss. For those who are not familiar with the show, Ju Jude, or I'm um, Jude, I'm sorry, Jude is raised by two lesbians as his adoptive parents. So evidently he, it's a learned behavior, the whole same sex stuff, which, you know, it's one of the most dysfunctional, worst households. It's been statistically proven you can grow, in it, grow up in, is when either two gay men or two lesbians adopt children. Because they can't procreate in their own, obviously. So what they got to do, they got to recruit, they got to adopt. And these kids turn out to be some of the most messed up people on the planet. Statistical fact, I've got into that before. I've got a gigantic file on this that I've got into. Just key in um, homosexual or gay in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. I mean, there's tons of reports I've done on this. Uh, Gabe Bergato, writing for the Daily Beast, claimed that the kiss set the, the kiss set a fantastic standard, one that reassures all the real life Judes and Connors out there that their feelings of self discovery during those middle school and junior high years are valid. In other words, whatever sick, twisted, perverted sexual inclinations you might have toward the same sex, those are valid. Those are good, those are decent, and those are moral, according to this fork-tongued devil. Personally, I find this sickening, not heartwarming, or terrific. First, there is the power of example, either for good or bad. Young people in particular are influenced by what they see on TV. And in the movies, little boys dressing up like Superman or Spider-Man with little girls mimicking the looks of the latest starlet. Okay, and all of that's really kind of bad enough. I mean, you could do, I could do a whole study on Superman, how that is an actual satanic knockoff for some awaited savior from another planet, which is, it's, it's very blasphemous if you look at the whole script of Superman. And then little girls dressing up like the latest starlet. I mean, that, you know, none of that's godly either. It's all evil. So as they get older, it's just not a matter of playing dress-up games. Instead, these kids are now emulating the lifestyles of the of those they follow, like Jude and Connor. So Hollywood's trailblazing the way for that, and, and I'm sure there's a special place in hell for all these Hollywood directors and people that are that are uh, putting this swill 
out there and, and trying to get everyone brainwashed into thinking that this is good moral behavior. So, next report. Planet Fitness bans woman from gym for complaining about transgendered man in locker room. The gym's corporate office told the woman in Midland, Michigan, resident Yvette Comer, that the transgender man in question identified as a female and that the members could use whatever locker room corresponded to their personal gender identity. Our gender identity non-discrimination policy states that members and guests may use all gym facilities based on their sincere, self-reported gender identity. McCall Gosselin of the Public Direct, uh, Relations Director for Good Old Planet Fitness said in a statement, the manner in which this member expressed her concerns about the policy exhibited behavior that the management at the Midland Club deemed inappropriate and disruptive to other members, which is in violation of the membership agreement, and as a result, her membership was canceled. Cormer said the incident began on February 28th when she was startled by the transgendered man in the locker room where she was at. She said, I was blocked because a man was standing there. In other words, I guess she was, stand, she was walking in the women's locker room and this man was blocking her. <laughs> Cormer said, it freaked me out. Why is a man in here? She also said an employee told her that the individual identifies as a woman. Oh... Well, that makes it all right, you know. After Cormer told other female members about the transgendered person, she received a call from the corporate headquarters claiming she was violating the gym's no-judgment policy. See, it's a no-judgment zone at Planet Fitness. That place is the biggest stinking joke from what I've heard from everyone that's ever went there. I mean, you can't even hardly sweat there without getting kicked out from what I heard. Don't, don't make any noises while you're training. Don't do these types of exercises. Don't, you don't intimidate the other members. Don't do, you, you can't do anything. It's, it's absolutely big brother on steroids when you go into a Planet Fitness, unless you abide by all the rules. But it's supposedly a no judge, a judgment-free zone, which is a total joke. There's all kinds of things that you can't do in there that is normal gym behavior and you can't do it. Well, why? They're judging my behavior. They're just hypocrites. And this is just further proof of that. I, I mean, I've heard nothing but horror stories about Planet Fitness. I won't ever even step foot in there. Um, going further, she said... <laughs> she said she was violating the no-judgment policy and asked her if she would stop talking to other women about the incident. To which she, she declined. She probably wanted to get validation from other women if they felt uncomfortable about having some man in the women's locker room. Oh no, we, we can't say anything because it's not politically correct. we got to let men in here. That's insane. So again, you've got 0.001% of the population or whatever the transgender is totally imposing their will on the other people in there that would never probably in a million years try to pull such a thing. These transgenders are some of the most sickest, evil. They're a whole level beyond the, the uh, sodomite gay people. Not to say transgenders aren't sodomites, but they're a whole other level of wickedness. I've, I've had some experience just dealing, observing behavior from them. And they are, they have, it's just like, they have got to have validation of their wicked, evil behavior. And then they've always got to come across They've always got to play the um, the poor persecuted me card. Oh, woe is me. Everyone is against me and you're all judging me. And now oh, I'm just live such a, you know, and all of this feel sorry for me garbage. I've seen this over and over and over again from this one transgender I have observed from afar. And it is so disgusting and it's like they have just got to have validation of their wicked behavior. And they've got to impose their, their will on you is really what it boils down to. There's a satanic demon in these people. The gays have it, but the transgenders really, really have it at another level where they've got to impose. It's just like Islam. They've got to impose their will on you. You've got to submit to whatever wickedness they say you have to submit to. And I won't do it. I don't, you know, whatever. 
wickedness is wickedness and it's transgender is about as wicked as you could get. So she says, the, um, the corporate representative told her she was banned. She says, I feel it's kind of one-sided. Kind of? <laughs> kind of one-sided? All that matters is, is the transgender devil getting his way. <laughs> That's all that matters. Corner added that adding that Planet Fitness should offer separate accommodations for transgender people. Can you imagine having to knock down more walls or whatever to have a, your own transgender bathroom? No, I don't think the transgender would want that. The transgender would want to be in there with the women, making them feel uncomfortable, imposing his will on them. That would make the transgender feel better. That would satisfy the demons that, that possess and infest these devils. Having their own bathrooms not wouldn't do that. Yeah, it would validate them, but that would be too lonely. No, they want to make everybody feel uncomfortable and, and impose their will on them. And then report them if they say anything against it. Because they're being a hypocritical, bigoted racist against my perverted, wicked, evil, sexual, deviant behavior. I mean, that's how I, that's how I call it. You know, I mean, I know I'm sugarcoating it, but I got to stop that. Anyway, so um, uh, a similar, she, and then she says, adding that Planet Fitness should offer separate accommodations. And then she says, I kind of, I feel like I am the one I'm the only one who's being punished here. She is. She's the only one. Because she had a problem with this disgusting, wicked, evil devil in the woman's locker room. Unbelievable. A similar incident occurred in 2013 when female students at Florence High School in Colorado were threatened with hate crime charges after they complained about being harassed by transgender in the girls' bathroom. School officials firmly sided with the transgender student, of course. And they, in, they even suggested the girls give up access to most of their restrooms altogether. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. They're legitimate females. And they're the ones that should give up the female restroom. So the transgender devil boy will feel comfortable. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. That's what we're talking about here. I got a lot more Bible verses we're going to be getting to pretty soon. In response, the Pacific Justice uh, Institute sent a letter to the school warning them against placing transgender rights over the privacy of female students. See, if you don't push back against this type of wickedness, and I don't just mean in prayer, I mean through this type of action as well. I'm not saying God couldn't take care of it, but there needs to be dual action prayer and boots on the ground and we're going to talk about that more at the end of the study he says we're not going to stand by and let ni the 99.7 percent of our students lose their privacy and free speech rights just because a 0.3 percent of the population are gender confused and this is what this boils down to 0.3 percent of the population a deviant wicked 0.3 percent of the population imposing their will on the other 99.7 percent and daring anyone to open their mouth to come against it uh, just pure wickedness so let's go to the next report open uh, new york chapter of boy scouts of america openly hires gay adults the new york chapter of the boy scouts of america broke the organization's national ban on openly on hiring openly gay adults serving in the institution this week when they announced Thursday night that they had hired 18-year-old Eagle Scout Pascal Tessier to work as a camp counselor at the 10 Mile River Scout Camp in upstate New York this summer. He's the first openly out-of-the-closet uh, gay male that they've ever hired openly. Now, listen... The Boy Scouts have been infiltrated with this garbage for decades of non-openly gay male men going in there so that they can molest little boys. Do you know the lawsuits that have been filed against the Boy Scouts? The fact that they're even allowed to exist anymore is an absolute miracle. 
I'm not saying that the concept of the Boy Scouts is bad, but you understand it is an absolute hotbed that attracts gay male pedophiles. And guess what? Statistically speaking, gay male men are far more likely to be pedophiles than a straight man who's a pedophile. And what I'm saying is statistically, there are way more, from a percentage wise of the population, the percentage is unbelievably disproportionately skewed toward gay male men being pedophiles than heterosexual men being pedophiles. Particularly when you consider the population demographic of gays are only like supposedly whatever, 3% of the population. Way dis Why? Because it's wickedness. There have been lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit that have been suppressed by the Boy Scouts of this type of, 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 of scout leaders molesting, you know, Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts or whatever for decades. Decades. So now they're finally, though, saying, you know what? I know we got all the, that water under the bridge there, and it's still going on, I'm sure, to a huge extent. But now we're really going to try to come out of the closet and really shove this down everyone's throat. They hired this 18-year-old this Eagle Scout, Pascal Tessier. The New York chapter told Washington Post that the organization got an application from Tessier, who's openly gay, and decided he was qualified based on his merits. Tessier has also been actively advocating for the inclusion of openly gay scout leaders in the organization for several years now. So this little devil started back when I guess he was 15, wanting this. He says, I'm sure it won't surprise to know that he's excited that he got the job. Zach Wallace, executive director of the Scouts for Equality. Scouts for Deviant Sexual Behavior Equality told the Washington Post, the lion's share of the credit here goes to the New York Council for stepping up to the plate. There's a lot of chapters that say they don't discriminate, but they just talk the talk. The Boy Scouts in New York walk the walk. So they're allowing the perversion openly to come in there so that they can have openly gay male scout leaders so that they can molest the boys on the weekend outings away from prying eyes of parents because that's what it's all about for these devil pedophiles next report over 300 prominent republicans come out of the closet in support of homosexual marriage now we're going to get into the legislation legislative side to see well there's there's nothing really going on legislatively that's that's allowing this to uh, prosper this wickedness to prosper and that couldn't be anything further from the truth over 300 prominent Republicans have signed a brief submitted to the U.S. Supreme Court calling for the legalization of same-sex marriage nationwide. 300 Republicans. Now, the more I'm seeing with this whole thing with the Republicans, they're turning into bigger sellouts than the Democrats at this point. They're just as wicked, just about. They're doing nothing. I thought, you know, everybody thought, oh, when, when I'm saying I thought. I was cautiously optimistic when we took over the Congress, the Senate, and we have all these majorities now. And you know, nothing's changed. Nothing. They're doing nothing to block any of the wicked legislation that Obama's ramming through. Nothing. In fact, they're going along with it. A lot of times, they're the swing votes. They're, they're, the, they're the, the decisive votes getting this wicked, evil legislation through. There's no difference anymore. They're all wicked and evil as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I know there's some holdouts and there's there's some ones in the conservative party that don't. Okay, fine. But the vast majority, you know, they're doing nothing. Here we have 300 prominent Republicans signing a brief submitted to the U.S. Supreme Court calling for legalization of same-sex marriage. Which is what they're, they just passed in Ireland. Which we will be talking about. The amicus brief was led by former National Republican National Committee Chairman Ken Melman, who also served as manager of George W. Bush's 2004 re-election campaign. One of the points that I hope people appreciate when... Oh, this is just... Yeah. <sighs> May God rain out his fury on these devils and on their forked devil tongues. 
One of the points that I hope people appreciate when they read the brief is that supporting marriage equality, meaning gay marriage, is in fact the conservative position. Oh, really? That's conservative. Supporting gay marriage. Men with men. Doing that which is unseemly, which the Bible talks about in Romans. It was just a death sentence in the Old Testament. I mean, you know, kill them. Bible said. But see, that's the conservative position. The brief argues that the 14th Amendment requires equal protection. Well, okay, but then, again, where does it ever end? Equal protection eventually for pedophiles. Equal protection for the pedophilic Muslims. Equal protection for child rapists. Where does it end? See, it, there's no... When you don't have defining lines in the sand, when you don't have black and white from a morality standpoint, anything starts to go. That's where we find ourselves. So that means that homosexuals should be permitted to marry each other. Now, the Bible says in Leviticus 20, 13, if a man lie with mankind as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Now, this is a morality commandment, okay? This never changes, ever. This isn't like some of the ceremonial commandments in the Old Testament where it says wear your beard a certain way and, and don't combine fabrics and, and don't let an ox pull with a mule or you know, stuff like that, okay? Not to say there's not wisdom in some of those things. Obviously, there was. I mean, the, the Levitical dietary guidelines, there's wisdom, okay? But I'm talking about morality, clear-cut morality issues, okay? If a man lieth with a mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Why does it say that? If you don't put them to death, the blood will be upon the land. And it will defile the land. Well, no, it won't. It, no, it won't. Homosexuals can do whatever they want and it doesn't hurt the land. Or it doesn't bring a curse on the land. Oh, really? Why does Leviticus 18, 22 through 25 say then... Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself where, therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before beast to lie down thereto. Notice they're comparing bestiality and homosexuality in the same exact uh, sentences. As far as perversion goes. I'm not saying that, you know, bestiality isn't worse than homosexuality. <laughs> they're both disgustingly wicked Okay, stuff, okay? But they're in literally the same verses, intertwined. And then it says, uh, Neither shall any woman stand before beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. See, and God's not the author of confusion. All this stuff, gay marriage and all this other... It's confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So see... You know when a nation is going to be cast out when things like bestiality and it's going to always start with the homosexuality are sanctioned. Then you're going to have the age of consent start to be lowered. You're going to have pedophilia. You're going to have Sharia law coming in and saying, hey, it's part of our religion. And, you know, we can't, you know, we, we need to be able to marry our daughter, our, you know, girls at nine and, you know, and, and have sex with women and their babies. And see, that's, it's all defiling the land. And when those things start going on in any particular country, if, if, if the inhabitants of that country don't take action against it and then go one step further and even legalize it, you will be cast out. The land will be cast out. What else happens? The, and the land is defiled. It defiles the land. Therefore, I do. And then, then you have the abortion child sacrifice going on all over America every day. That defiles the land like crazy. The land is defiled, therefore do I visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. That's what's coming to America. I can't see any other conclusion. I'm not saying God's not going to preserve a remnant, but I'm saying about in general, I believe the land is being set up to vomit out her inhabitants. I think we've probably got some natural disasters coming that we can't even comprehend. That God's probably been holding back It's cause and effect. It's going to happen. One of these days, it's, I mean, it's, uh, 
we've seen an uptick of earthquakes and natural disasters, and then you got Fukushima, and you've got all of the ways that Satan's trying to destroy the planet through chemtrails and uh, Fukushima again. We 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 look at that and fluoridating the water system and polluting the 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 um the land and the groundwater with the fracking and all this, the Gulf oil spill. So many things that, that Satan has tried to orchestrate to destroy the planet. Because ultimately he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and they want to get the world population down to 500 million, and then they'll want to get it down to zero eventually. Satan had his way. So everybody was dead. So if we go further, next report. Vice President Joe Biden, the, the devil's, the, the, the devil's, um, I don't know what you'd call him, the devil's faithful servant, Vice President Joe Biden used the Lord's name in vain on Friday as he spoke in an annual conference for a prominent homosexual activist organization. Now see, this is where the rubber really meets the road, because here's, you got the most pro-homosexual vice president and president in office right now, and I'm talking rapidly. His daughter's a, a lesbian. Obama is 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 a, a totally ra uh, rabid homosexual. I mean, they they've got bathhouses in Chicago with rooms named after him that he used to frequent. It was it's a, it's well known by the gay male community that he is that. It's also well known in the gay. Well, not, not the gay male, but the gay community in general, lesbian or whatever. I've seen several statements that, you know, it's no, it's no, um, no secret that Michelle's a trainee. Transvestite. All kind of proof of it up on the internet, if you ask me. And it's all, they're comparing. Okay, listen, this is how a man's built. Now, look at Michelle Obama. Okay. And there's all these different parameters you can look at anatomically that determine if you're a man. Where your belly button is, how high your hips are, how thick your waist is, your head to shoulder ratio. All these things you can't fudge. You can't plastic surgery them away. <laughs> I'm telling you. Michelle's Michael. And he's called Michelle Michael on more than one occasion all a facade it's all a total stinking facade can you imagine god looking down on all this what a what a stinking abomination biden who served as a keynote speaker at the human rights campaign annual spring conference in washington was expressing and, and if you don't believe that go up go up to youtube and can Michelle Obama, I don't know, exposed or man or whatever. You'll find the videos. Rather convincing. Many, many, many pictures that have been taken that are can't really be explained. I won't say any more than that. But pictures that haven't been doctored or photoshopped or whatever. Okay, so Biden served as the keynote speaker at the Human Rights Campaign Annual Spring Conference in Washington, was expressing disagreement with the recent remarks made by famed neurosurgeon and presidential candidate uh, Dr. Ben Carson. Carson had spoken earlier this week with CNN's Chris Cuomo regarding whether or not he believes homosexual behavior is a choice. Well, of course it's a choice. Okay, but they want to convince you, no, it's not a choice. I can't help myself. I can't help it that I'm wicked, evil, and perverted. Okay, now granted, it is true. It is a proven fact that most homosexuals, when interviewed, will admit to being raped by a same-sex, um, same-sex, typically relative at an early age. What does that tell you? That tells you that it is a huge demonic transfer that takes place when you, when a man sodomizes a little boy, or if it, it's a little girl, but a little boy. Huge. Now you study Aleister Crowley. He knew that. That was one, that was one of the, the main things in his high-level witchcraft that he would talk about. I mean, Aleister Crowley, 666, the great beast, the most wickedest man on earth, claim to fame. Yeah, that guy. He knew, Aleister Crowley said, that the, the highest type of human sacrifice, at least in the occult, was, I believe, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy infant. 
okay? And the sooner they could rape little children, the better. They would vampirize, the younger they were, the more innocent they were, the more they could literally, they were literally trying to vampirize their youth and defile them. And when working a high-level witchcraft spell, this was many, many times part of that witchcraft, evil, disgusting process. It's part of the spell to do this. So he knew that by sodomizing young children, it was the optimal way to get them demon-possessed at the earliest possible age. Now, that's not fair to the child if that's being done to them. And from that standpoint, I would have nothing but compassion on a gay person that had that done to them. Because it wasn't their fault. It may have also been a generational curse. The Bible says the sins of the forefathers are carried to the third and fourth generation. There's also other verses like that that even talk about more generations. But when you have somebody that has had that done to them and then they turn around and start doing it to other people, I think that's where my compassion starts to stop because now you become the very monster that you were just molested by. You were still responsible for your own sin. You cannot point back and say, I was molested at an early age and that gives me a pass to do it to other people. I do have listeners that have emailed me and said that I was in a flagrantly gay lifestyle and I and God delivered me from it and I am not going to sit here in judgment and question that and say that that can't happen because of Romans saying that they've been turned over to a reprobate mind they can never be saved and that's it I am not God I am not going to sit here in judgment of that the Bible says, call upon me and I'll, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not I am the Lord the God of all flesh is there anything too hard for me well, no, there's not. He created the universe. So I do have the faith to believe that God can deliver a gay person from a gay lifestyle. It is very rare. I believe that when people get into that lifestyle, for whatever reason, which I cannot comprehend, the, the, the pull of perversion sin is so great. And I don't understand the concept of being attracted to another guy. I'm sorry. That's one thing I don't understand. But it evidently, those demons and those devils, the pull of that must be so great that they would rather choose hell than ever break away and ever try to repent and ever get saved. So I wanted to kind of preface that by saying that, you know, because that's not fair. I mean, little children that this happens to, and then they turn into the same thing. But I wanted to kind of, you know, give, uh, I don't know, my, my opinion on that whole subject. So, Dr. Ben Carson says, and this is why he got excoriated by Biden. He says, a lot of people who go into prison go, in go into prison straight. And when they come out, they're gay. He said, so did something happen while they're in there? Ask that question. End of quote. Well, he's right. You go in there, and if you, particularly if you go in there and you're younger or maybe a pretty boy or maybe not part of a gang system or a lot of times they do that as gang initiation and you get raped well guess what you're getting those sodomy demons and then you may start actually liking it there is so much wicked evil behavior that goes on in these prisons and there's a whole sect of the prison population now um that i've seen some documentaries on where the guy's literally turn like transgender and start like they act like the women and they're literally the official women of the prison system and they're pretty much left alone by the other guys because they're viewed as like the women oh it, it is so deranged and evil and perverted but yeah i yeah people go into prison straight and come out get that happens a lot in women I mean, a lot in women's prisons, too. They go in there, heterosexual, they come out lesbian. I think it might even be a higher percentage in women's prison, if you actually statistically look at that. 
Carson, who is a Seventh Day Adventist, which is just another workspace death cult that'll get you into hell, later issued an apology via Facebook for his choice of language. And noted that while he personally disagrees with same-sex marriage for religious reasons, he believes that states should have the right to legalize such arrangements if they wish. How wishy-washy can you be? You know, grow backbone, make a statement. Oh, but he could never get elected president. Well, he's not going to get elected president anyway if he doesn't follow the Illuminati's guidelines and do as they say. The, the, the voting system's rigged. It's been rigged for decades. Especially now with electronic voting, voting the Diebold machines where they can just change the vote tallies. Just just go on the YouTube and, and key in the, the numerous documentaries they've got about vote systems rigged, U, United States vote systems rigged. Tons of them. All kind of scandals. Every time we have major elections that are just downplayed. HBO did a big special on it where they exposed it even. So... Carson continued to receive criticism for the original statement, including from Vice President Joseph Biden, who excoriated the former doctor on Friday while speaking at the HRC's annual con convention. And here's what good old devil boy Biden, I mean, have you seen these pictures of this devil lately? All that creepy, perverted, pedophilic garbage he does to these young girls that he gets around? That guy is so evil. He can't even contain himself when he's in front of a million people. He goes and smells their hair right there. I mean, he's done it over and over, or tries to kiss them. And, you know, and they're like 9, 10, 11, 13, 4. I mean, he can't stop himself from doing it. He is the biggest creep in high political office, outward creep. I have ever seen. The fact that that devil, I mean, it is so evil. Look it up online. I put out many links to this behavior that, you know, there's all kind of videos that show this. And he's, it's like he's getting worse. So this is the very devil that has the audacity to say this statement about uh, Dr. Ben Carson on those statements I read you. He says, every ridiculous assertion from Dr. Carson on, I mean ridiculous, I mean, he uses the, the G word, the J word. He says, he says Jesus, and then he says God. He said, oh, G-O-D, I mean, it's kind of hard to fathom it, isn't it? So he's up there blaspheming, okay? And then he says, we're never going to be able to eliminate the bigots. They're a, they're a small percentage of the population. They'll continue to be vocal, Biden said, but make one thing absolutely clear. They are an increasingly smaller and smaller minority. This country is changing, end of quote. So if you don't think that's a threat... I mean, you can just hear the vitriol and the disdain this has, this this devil has, for any type of person with any kind of morality um, regarding the gay movement, LB whatever movement. This country is changing, thanks to good old boys like you, Joe. Now, listen to what he says next. Joe Biden says Bible-believing Christians violate the LGBT rights by simply existing. <laughs> this is how bad it's getting. So, you know, I can talk about the Muslim stuff and you could say in your head, ah, oh, they're never going to, they're never going to legalize pedophilia. They're never going to do this or that. Look at, look at who we've got in the highest office right now that would love nothing more than to legalize every form of perversion if they could get away with it. The Bible says in Romans 1, 26 and 27 in the King James Bible, For this cause God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Now this is New Testament. So you can't say it's all Old Testament. This is new. There's, there's 
plenty of stuff in the New Testament that condemns this behavior. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of air which was meat. That word meat means fit or apt. Fitting. And then it goes on to say that they were turned over to a reprobate mind to do those things which, which were not convenient. So that's how the Bible feels about this whole crowd, this whole disgusting LGBT crowd. Vice President Joe Biden said today that the rights of the LGBT people are violated by religious condemnation. He is directly referring to Bible verses like the one I just read. The progressive liberals are well aware that it is God speaking by the Holy Spirit through the Bible that condemns homosexuality in all its many forms. According to Joe Biden, the, Americans Bi the American Bible-believing Christian who takes the Bible literally is violating the rights of the LGBT crowd by trusting in God's word. Absolutely. 100%. And this is why old-fashioned preaching will soon be classified as a hate crime. Because liberal, I mean, theoretically, if you're in a 501c3 corporate church controlled by the government under IRS guidelines, you really shouldn't be preaching that stuff anyway. You're not supposed to be getting into, like, this type of political type of, of subjects. That's why you got to be real careful around election time. Just because the government's let these churches get away with it for a long time, the ones that do it, doesn't mean that they should be doing it. They were the ones that signed on the dotted line wanting to get yoked up with the government. Why is it wrong for the government to want what, want them to abide by the terms of this agreement? You want to know more about that subject, about getting a church out of the 501c3 trap, go to Unregistered Baptist Fellowship, I believe it's called. Unregistered Baptist Fellowship. You should be able to find their website online. And they've got a legal department with Dr. Greg Dixon and Barbara Cate. And they, they, they show you, and then he's got that book, Trail of Blood Revisited, which gets into that. They show you. I got a file I can send you as well. But um, they show you what a trap it, it, it's, it is. And, and how, I, I think it's the main thing that's, why the, one of the main reasons is the church has been gelded and remained silent. Because they're literally under subjection. They're not under subjection to God. God didn't create that entity, that corporate entity. They're under subjection to the entities that created them, and that is the IRS and the government. Our wicked, wicked, the, you know, institutions. So you have to, hey, if, if you want to play by, you, you want all the benefits of, of that uh, corporate status, then you got to play by their rules. Theoretically, you should be. So, going further... Um, and this is why old-fashioned preaching will soon be classified as a hate crime because liberals can't stand it. Biden is also saying that the rights of the Christian are inferior to the rights of the LGBT individual. So again, it's this tiny minority, this tiny minority of, at least currently in America, of Muslims, of LGBT crowd, of the pro-death, well, actually pro-death is probably more of a higher majority as far as people that are pro-abortion. But I know that that ratio has been shifting. And the more wicked the organization, the more rabid they are about imposing their wicked viewpoints and forcing you to accept their wicked behavior, of which I will never accept, personally. So let's go further. Urgent warning. New York, time, New York time writer. Christians must be made to embrace the gay lifestyle. 1 John 3, 12 through 13 says, Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother um, and there, and wherefore slew he him? In other words, why did he slay Abel? Okay. Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So when you see the vitriol and the hatred of the pro-abortion, pro-death, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender crowd, Muslims against Christians know that they hate you because their works are evil and yours are righteous. And marvel not then if the world hate you. That's why Cain slew Abel. It says right here, and wherefore slew he him? That's why. 
It's good to understand that concept. In the space of about a decade, I warned about the hard-left fascist reprobates and how much they hate us. I compared their hatred to that of Nazis for the Jews. Um, the article, This article proves exactly what I have been saying. This article was not written by some kook or unknown tabloid, but rather an op-ed columnist for the New York Times. One of the main devil publications in America. The New York Times is still the flagship for the hard left and leads the way in their way of thinking. This is a clear message of war against Bible-believing Christians. The author's thinking is not isolated, but many who think like him are uh, now leading the military and many are, chief, are the chief of police agencies. There are now many judges and governors who think like this. They loathe us and now they are to the point of, of, of planning to destroy us. This is uh, this is leading the hard left news outlet calling for forced re-education of those that believe in the authority of the Bible. This is right out of Stalin and Mao's handbook. They are telling us what they plan to do, and I have no doubt that Obama is one of them. Once again, this is not an isolated kook, but a columnist for the New York Times. He freely writes this, and then it's published. America is now at a critical mass with these reprobates. They see us as only the only obstacle in the way of freely living in their sin. Uh, that, you know, that's going to make their lives so much better. I mean, you will see the uh, lifespan of these devils dro drop even more. I mean, the more they're allowed to just openly participate in sin, unfettered, they're just, you're going to see their, their lifespans just drop and drop and drop and drop. You know? Watch now for more and more writers saying things like this. The violence and bloodshed is now very close. America, the America that we knew is now just a memory as God is turning it over to reprobates for judgment. Please do not think this is a phase that will go away. The reprobates hate us because we represent God and they hate him. Absolutely. Here's, this, here's the report. New York Times writer, Christians must be made to embrace the gay lifestyle must be made in quotes here's the little worm devil sodomite named frank bruni you can just tell he's a flaming gay guy by his picture the man who states christians must be forced to change their views about homosexuality you can just see the the, the hypocritical arrogance on his face it's all over him Bruni's solution to the impasse is not some sort of goodwill compromise or treaty of mutual respect, but to take a no-prisoners ultimatum to Christians to abandon their beliefs or else. When Bruni says that Christians' understanding of sexual morality is a choice, what he means is that there is a way out without completely losing face, meaning there's a way out for the Christian without completely losing face. Just embrace the new morality preached by the mainstream liberal devil churches that see nothing wrong with any sexual arrangement the world is comfortable with see that's that's our way out as as um if we want to save face as a christian i personally would rather die than 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 give into this garbage i'm not looking to save face and I know, I know most of my listeners aren't either. And most, uh, hopefully most of the remnant body of Christ aren't either. So I'm not saying like I'm the only one. I'm saying that this is just a reasonable service, if you ask me. It sa then it goes on to say, then we will accept, uh, if you do all of this, then we will accept you, the gay, the gay community. I don't want to be accepted by them. I don't. Our life as Christians is, and I've said this many times, is not a popularity contest. The Bible says you'll be hated of all men, you know, <laughs> for righteousness sake, essentially. Marvel not, these types of things. So we're, we're, we're proceeding right now into the most wicked time the world's ever known, rivaling, you know, um, you know, the Sodom and Gomorrah, that isolated region, and then also the time of Noah's flood, and Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, Noah's day was a pretty wicked day. So, Bruni takes it upon himself to explain how the Bible can be interpreted to read that God is really fine with sodomy. So now, we've got this demon-possessed vessel of Satan giving us a Bible lesson. You know, I wish he would have put on a priest collar maybe and then give, given the Bible lesson. It would have went over a little bit better. So, um, 
God is fine with sodomy, and then all that antiquated stuff against adultery, fornication, and men lying with other men is a quaint vestige of an archaic worldview that went out with uh, went out definitively with Freud. Oh, again, the world according to this devil. The scary part about Bruni's essay is that it it's not is not his awkward attempt at playing the biblical scholar but the undertone of evident disdain for Christians and his proposal that those who resist should be for forcibly re-educated. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we, should, we need to be forcibly re-educated, according to this sodomite devil. In Christians' refusal to bend with the times, Bruni sees not faithfulness to God, but willful obstinacy that must be broken. Of course, because he's Satan's emissary. And that's what Satan would say. He's a mouthpiece for Satan. But what if Christians don't want to change? What if they are convinced that the modern worldview is not the most enlightened path when it comes to the ultimate meaning of life and death, time and eternity? Religion, writes Bruni, is going to be the final holdout and most stubborn refuge for homophobia. It will give license. To, it will give license to discrimination. License to discrimination. No, what you want to do is make it illegal to say anything against your perverted, wicked lifestyle, so that you have the law on your side, and then people, born again Christians, who take a stance for righteousness' sake, can be thrown in jail and ultimately killed. That's what you want. So. And thus, religion must be stamped out. Now, he's not, listen, when he says religion, he's not referring to Buddhism or Hinduism or any other religion that doesn't really take a stance on homosexuality. He's not going to refer to Islam for sure. Because, again, they're all on the same team. Even though Islam kills gays. Even though there's so many pedophiles in Islam. I mean, it's so, it's so hypocritical. To raping little boys and girls and doing all this garbage and yet they'll they'll go out and act like we're against gay people and hang them and throw them off stuff and kill them all when most of them are actually homosexual at one level or another or you know it's so such hypocrisy no they're talking about bible believing christians when he says religion okay so the I wanted to make that clear. Bruni cites fellow gay activist Mike Mitchell Gold, uh, founder of the uh, advocacy group Faith in America, as saying that church leaders must be made to take homosexuality off the sin list. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't even matter if, if, if the churches did. It's not going to be off God's sin list. So what does it really matter if you say it is? It's not. It doesn't matter what you say. It's what matters... Is it in the word of God or is it not? Does God condemn it or does he not? Our opinions are irrelevant, Mr. Bruni. All that really matters is what the word of God says. But he says that's archaic and passe. Well, how convenient so you can justify your wicked, evil lifestyle. How convenient. Uh, then he says, his commandment is worthy and warranted, says Bruni. In other words, taking homosexuality off the sin list. So now, according to the LGBT crowd, the government should be dictating belief systems to the churches and enforcing theological matters. See, that's, that's what's coming. The government dictating belief systems to the churches, they're already beholden to them. You've already got a huge percentage of them, of the uh, 501c3 preachers signed up in the, um, signed up in the uh, clergy response teams, yoked up with FEMA and Homeland Security. So, I mean, when you've already got that dynamic going on, there's not a whole lot that, that the churches aren't going to give into. They're just going to be like paid informants and rats on their own congregations when things get bad. So this is just the ne next logical progression of that. And I'm not saying every 501c3 church, but uh, I'd say the absolute majority. 100%. So, let's go further here. Um... Now politicians and courts should be telling Christians what they're allowed to, to be considered as sinful. <laughs> isn't, this, uh, isn't this what America was, was founded by to escape from? 
yeah, great point. But it's just coming back full circle. People are already taking, talking about forcing churches to perform same-sex weddings, whether or not they like it, or to get out of the marriage business altogether. So if you want to read his, his disgusting article in full, the full article, uh, there's a link here. It's called Bigotry, the Bible, and Lessons of Indiana. Oh boy, we're going to really get the truth from him. So the Bible says in Job 4.8, even as, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. So Bruni, you and all your devil ilk out there, you're plowing iniquity and you're sowing wickedness, but you're going to reap it. And you reap it, one of the most glaring ways you reap it is a good old 39-year lifespan on average. That's pretty tough to argue that there's some serious, serious problems with your movement. Job 4.9 then says, By the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. Psalm 37, 38, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So all you in this whole LGBT crowd, you this is what you have to look forward to. If you do not repent and get out of this, this wicked, evil, disgusting movement and get saved. But the transgressors shall be destroyed. The end thereof the wicked shall be cut off. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. The Bible also says that. And that hell hath enlarged herself to receive you. Psalm 101 verse 8 says, I will, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. See, that's their future. You know, but I'm, I am a bigot and I'm a homophobe and I'm terrible for telling them the truth. Why? Well, the Bible says, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes, most of the time you tell somebody the truth, you become their enemy. Especially somebody like a sodomite. Because they don't want to hear it. And you become their enemy. So be it. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I'm, I've run out of time for this part and we will go to part three next. God bless you.